Hello and welcome to Just Ride Bikes. Today we are talking about a product that merges the traditional with the modern, the brand new Wahoo Kicker Roller. Now you might have seen this being leaked or talked about um, over the last few months, but today it has finally launched. So in this video, go to all the details of this brand new product and what it's like to use. Now Wahoo has also launched another product, the Powerlink Zero dual sided power meter pedals I have here. And you can see a video on those and my impressions of those linked above and down below as well. But in this video, we are talking all about this new roller trainer. So let's dive in. So what we have here is the US company's take on a very traditional set of rollers. Now, some of you might be aware of rollers, you might indeed use rollers at home, and they are very simple, uh, not that easy to use, quite a steep learning curve, as the number of video fails on YouTube is testament to, but they are really popular with racing cyclists, whether on a road or track, for warming up before a race or keeping warmed up between races. Very simple, no resistance, get on and ride with your normal road bike. But what Wahoo has done brought their technology to a roller to bring it into the modern era. And it's a really interesting product, and I think it definitely has its appeal, but it's very much a niche product. So let's talk tech details, and we'll come back to this bit in a moment. Let's start at the back where the action really is. So we have two small rollers for the rear wheel to sit on and spin away, and the company's small, very distinctive Chevron branded flywheel there. There's no power meter built into this device. Instead, you connect this using AMP Plus or Bluetooth with a power meter on your bike, and that can be any compatible power meter, but you can use the Powerlink Zeros here. Indeed, they're selling this as a package with a roller and these power meter pedals if you want the complete package. So what that means is the resistance of the roller can be controlled by the computer program, either for an interval session or riding your favorite loop in Watopia. And then up front, we have what in effect is a stabilizer, which holds the front wheel in place, as you can see, and means using a roller is much more accessible. I'm not sure if the idea is you start with the stabilizer on and then remove it as you get more used to it, or whether it's there to be used all the time. Plenty of adjustment for different wheel sizes and tire sizes as well. So it does work fairly well. It means you have a roller with some of the benefits in terms of convenience and uh, easy packing away and lower weight than a smart trainer, but you have the uh, stability that this arm gives you over a regular set of rollers. The whole system comes together really easily, basically two parts, the rear section and the front section, with an adjustable quick release here for adjusting for wheel length, whether you have a longer or shorter bike. And this front wheel adjusts the width of the clamp here, so it'll fit most bikes really easily. Um, no problems to get up and running, and it connects to the Pamis pedals and a Wahoo Element computer, and then your favorite training platform. And I used it really well with Swift, and no issues with it there. And it gives, gives a really natural road feel, more natural than uh, most other trainers. You are using your own tire and rear wheel, and your own bike as well, so it feels very normal, feels more natural perhaps than many uh, smart trainers. But my experience of noise is higher than a Wahoo kicker. Definitely more whirring coming from the rear tire. And there is the issue you're wearing down your rear tire as well. So you do a lot of training, you might want to swap your rear tire. But if it's a device really aimed at warming up before a race or during a race, then you won't be using it for extensive periods compared to how you would use a smart trainer. So that probably gets around the wear issue with your rear tire. So this stabilizer works really well. It gives a really nice secure, stable feeling platform. The bike does move around a lot more. The back wheel sort of fishtails around quite a bit more compared to a smart trainer. And one concern I do have is that you can see the front wheel flexing between the fork blades when you have this clamp mechanism around the front wheel, which is a little alarming. I'm not sure if that is a concern or a problem long-term, but one to um, be aware of for sure. So the cost of this new kicker roller is 700 pounds on its own or 1200 pounds if you include these Powerlink Zero power meter pedals as well. Of course, you can use your own power meter if you have one on the crank or somewhere else on the bike. So it's a fairly affordable package, still more expensive than really basic rollers as well, but not quite as expensive as something like a kicker smart trainer. 
At this point, I can't help but wondering who this new product is really aimed at. Now, of course, professional racing cyclists will be using this. I can see these lined up in a row outside team bus for sure. And amateur racers, whether on the road or track, will see the benefits of this. But you might be watching this and wondering if it's better or a good alternative to a smart trainer like Wahoo Kicker here. And for me, it's a pretty simple answer really. If you're really focused on doing good quality indoor training sessions and you have a bike, you're happy to take the rear wheel out and fix to a trainer like this, then this is still a better option. Now, of course, at £1,000, this is more expensive than the Kicker Roller on its own, £700, but cheaper than the £1,200 when you include the company's own brand new Powerlink Zero power meter pedals, which you need to make this the connected smart trainer to really get the most benefit out of it. So in a way, this is a cheaper, more affordable package than this entire package here. But it doesn't really beat the convenience and the ease of use of a normal set of rollers, which are cheaper and lighter and easier to fold away in the back of a car, because this is quite heavy, even though it's still lighter than a normal smart trainer. So an interesting product. For me, I don't think it's a product for a wide section of the market. A normal smart trainer, wheel on or wheel off, is a better product for indoor training, uh, more stability, you have a power meter built into it and it's more secure and it's also quieter. Well, this is quite noisy actually with a rear tire on it. But then on the flip side, it might offer enough convenience and a small form factor over a normal smart trainer to make this a perfect product if you just dabble in indoor training, you just do a bit now and again and you like the idea of it being easy to transport whether to a race or whether to your family's house if you're going traveling or whatever. So it might be the product that really ticks all the boxes for you. For me though, personally speaking, I don't think it's a product that I'll be using. I'll stick with my normal smart trainer. I think I get more benefits out of a normal smart trainer for indoor training at the time of year. But I'd love to hear what you think by leaving a comment down below. Do you see the value in this product or do you think it's not the product for you? Love to hear your thoughts as always. And if you want to see my video on the Powerlink Zero pedals, then check this box right here. Right. Thanks for watching. See you all again very soon.